All right, let's go through the process of creating a mechanical drawing. Remember, this is just one process. It's one that I like to teach with. It gives you a lot of practice at a lot of different things, and it does follow a pretty industry standard methodology. So the first thing to do is open up your library resource file. So I've done that. There's my library resource file. And then I'm going to make sure that I've set up my workspace appropriately. I've come down here and I've got all of my uh, controls set the way I like it and um, I'm ready to go. So then once I've got that, I type um, DC for Design Center and I make sure that I'm looking at my open drawings uh, and there we go. That's got, that's got uh, all the stuff I'm going to need now is available. So once you're set and ready, it's time to actually make the new drawing. So there is the new drawing button. And I'm going to turn off my grid lines. I happen to work without those. And every time you start a new drawing, you have to check your units to make sure you're drawing appropriate. So I'm going to type units. And I am decimal. This is a mechanical drawing, so it's going to be decimal. But I see that my angle is decimal degrees, but not much precision. So I'm going to add a little bit more precision to that. Okay, once I've gone that, I'm going to get ready to draw, but I need to know what I'm going to draw. I, if I, if I have something that I'm not drawing from my mind, I like to put the image right in. So I'm going to attach an image. I have saved the image. I took a snip and I saved it. So I'm going to go attach. And I've saved it in my downloads of my computer. So here's my computer, Network Drive Z. Downloads. And there's the screenshot. takes a little bit to get in there because it's got to go and get mine and uh, yeah that's all good you can just do that just click OK and uh, we'll go scale factor one that's good there it is and it doesn't have to be to scale or anything that's what I'm going to draw so I see that I have some geometry lines and some hidden lines and I'm also going to add phantom lines so that I can help line myself up. They won't show eventually. Okay, I can also put those on no print. So let's go to my layers. And I'm going to add geometry. Left button holds down and I drag it in. And I'm going to do hidden left button down drag it in and uh, I didn't I didn't load phantom so I'll go ahead and use center lines for it so let's go back to my home ribbon in my layers I've got center def points geometry hidden so I'm I'm looking pretty good there okay so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this kind of fake layer and I have to look at this I'm going to draw my front view first, or as at least as much of it as I can. Then I'm going to draw the top view. I like to draw a bounding box. And I see that it is 3.75 wide. Shows it right there. And 1.85 tall. So let me come over here and I'll kind of line it up. 3.75 wide. by 1.2, uh, sorry, 1.85, 1.85, and then I can use my tracking to get there. So now that kind of Z-shaped thing should fit right in that box. And then I know that this box has to line up, and it's 3.75 and 2. 
so I can come up a little bit I got my tracking on 3.75 and 2 And you can draw those all just separate lines, however you want to do it. And I see I've probably got those a little too close. So I should probably move that up. Just make sure it all stays lined up. So that's where I'm going to draw those two shapes. Now I can go back to my geo layer. And uh, right off the bat, I can start kind I can kind of start drawing some things that I know. I know this dimension, it's two. Let me turn that on. And I know this dimension, it's 0.4. And I know this dimension, it's 0.4. So those are some of the things I know. Now, if I were to draw this line all the way down, I can get some more going. So I'm going to draw all the way down. And I know if I draw across, I can do a fillet command. That's pretty quick. Or I can just draw all the way across and trim. I just typed TR for trim. So that, that's kind of cool. And this has to draw all the way out to here. And then another 0.4. That's this dimension right here. And then it's going to go up. And this one comes over. And I can trim again. There, I got that Z shape just by using the dimensions that were given to me. And this one I know comes down at a 45 angle until it hits this line. So let's make sure my polar is set for 45. And then I can come down at that angle until it hits. That's important because I don't actually know where it is. <laughs> Uh, I just know that it starts at this corner and comes down. And that's all I know from the dimensions that are given here. So that's what I can draw in this view. So now for my next one, I can go to the top and I can draw kind of a lot of this. And these are some chamfers on the corner. So I, I can use some of the tools I know. I can draw along the back and the side and up to here. And then I can chamfer. And I know the two distances. It's 0.4 and 0.4. So I can do my distances. 0.4, enter, 0.4, enter. And now I can for those. If I hit enter, it repeats that command. So there, I've got a lot of that now. That's kind of cool. Now, I don't know where this line is, except that it has to line up with this line. So let me go back and make a little line to help myself. back to the geo layer. And I don't know where this line is, except I know that it lines up with this one. So I'll do the same thing again. This is why orthographics are so cool. I can tell where things line up because they're the they're just different views of the same feature. So 
So here I see that I come down, what is that number? 0.6 over 0.4 and I do the same thing up here 0.6 and over 0.4 so let me do that on each one of these actually I'm going to just do it on the bottom one where I see the dimensions 0 0.6 0 0.4 And I can either do an offset or I get it. That's 0.6 minus 0.4. So that's 0.2. Comes down 0.2. And then over 0.8. Now here's a cool thing. And we may not have done this one yet. This is a great new command. Maybe it's the mirror command. Because it's the same thing on the top. So if I mirror, and then it says select objects, I want to select those things I just drew. Enter, that selects, and my mirror line, I need the midpoint. Shift, right click, brings up my list, midpoint. I'm going to mirror it about that line. Erase source object, no and then draw here. So I'm almost set, but I see that this should be a hidden line. So I'm gonna click on this line and change it to hidden. And then I can, I can kind of erase or turn off my construction lines. There's, I'm using center line for that right now. There's the little light bulb, watch, off. Let's get that right. I'm on the geo. There it is. Off, on, off. That's a really nice feature. So now I have just a few things left to do. I'm going to turn them back on because I, I need them again. I need to find this line. And that's the front projection of this line. So that one has to come downward. And I'll draw a geometry line right over that. And um, I also see that these hidden lines are the projections of these lines. So I can project this one down, and I can project this one down. And you'll get good at the, you know, having, having a lot of these snaps and everything really, really make life easy. See how it's finding those spots. And those should have been hidden lines. If you get them wrong, click on them, click, click and make them the right kind of lines. Now they're hidden lines. And I see that this one goes from the hidden line right to here. So that's a geometry line that goes from the hidden line right on down. So now my front view is correct. If I go back up to my layers, I can turn off the light bulb. I think I've got everything on there. So now I just need this thing. Okay. Well, again, I know that the end of that has to line up. It's really showing this thing right here. So I can again come from the midpoint, shift right click midpoint, or you can set it. And then it's 0.4 wide, so I can offset half of that. And then on my geometry layer, and there's tons of ways to do this. You don't have to do it the way I'm doing it, but it 
seems to work. And then I can do the same thing by finding this spot. And that spot and changing that actually I'm not gonna do it that way I'm gonna put myself into the hidden and just draw those find the end run over till it clicks and draw that enter enter to repeat and then I'm gonna hide turn off my center line and there we go I've got the thing drawn now I'm gonna skip there's in in the plate there shows a right side view it doesn't do anything for us as a drawing so I'm asking you to skip it and you do not need to do the 3d view although as optional you may wish to later on okay that's step one get the model drawn I've done all of that in model space step two is to apply the industry standards so I need a few more layers I need dim text and I need no print okay and then I need a layout so let's go to the layouts and I'm going to suggest that you put this on a mechanical B size. I know the plate shows it on an A size, but it's too cramped. And so we're going to go a mechanical B size. Okay, and this is how you do it. There's my layouts from my resource drawing. Open them up. Hold your left mouse button down on B size and drag it in. Mechanical B size. And there it is. That is so cool. That's got everything that I need you to have on it. Later on, you're going to learn that tech docs have a little bit more on it, but this is going to be good for us. And then we're going to go to the no print and watch. I'm going to make a viewport now. When I'm in a layout, a new little tab comes up and it's blue and it's the layout tab. So left click on the layout tab and I'm going to make a rectangular viewport. Click, find a corner, and find another corner. And I've got this corner over here. Click. Look, oh man, all that shows up. That is really cool. <laughs> so I've created my viewport. Now remember I have to get it set. So I'm going to go into the model. I'm going to set it as one to one. I think everything is going to fit. And now I'm going to pan over. And I see that I've really got my viewport is too wide. So I'm going to go back to my piece of paper. Click on that viewport and I'm going to move it inward. Oh, that is so cool. <laughs> Hit escape. I'm going to go back to my model now. Model. Okay, so I can touch everything. It's there. It says it's one to one. I've got it setting pretty much where I want it. These might be a little too close. I might. That's pretty close together. So in my model, I might want to... Um, but I'll go ahead and lock it. We'll see how it goes. Now what's nice is because this line is on the no print layer, it shows up for my view right now, but when I go to plot this, it will not plot. So now I need to load the appropriate dim styles. Let's go back and see what's on these dim styles. Everything is two decimal places. I need XX. And I don't see that. So I'm going to go into my library resource file and make a new one, mechanical XX. Annotation. 
click the arrow and I'm gonna manage the styles and I'm gonna make a new one I'm gonna start with XXX I'm gonna make a new one and I am only gonna change the precision primary units change it to two X's okay and I should rename it. Right click, rename. It's mechanical XX. Isn't that cool? And now it's there for me forever. It's in my resource file. Anytime I need that again, I'll be able to do it. You know what I forgot to do? Oh, shame on me. I forgot to save this file. File, save as. It's my plate 4.1. There, now I've got it saved. All right, back to your layouts. Remember, all dimensions go in paper space on the layout. I'm in the layout. I need it to be on my piece of paper. You really have to be paying attention to that at all times. It's so easy to accidentally double click and go into the model. Just be constantly checking that you're in the right spot. So here we are, dim text layer. And I'm going to do my annotation is going to get set up so that I'm working on should be able to see more than those. I'm going to manage these. Oh, I need to put it in my drawing. Hold it down. Bring it into the drawing. And now all of a sudden, I've got mech XX. And I can start applying all of those dimensions that I saw. I happen to know what they are so I'm going to start putting them down but you can do the same thing and I'm not going to do all of these be sure you click the end point so that there's a little gap where you need it and try your best to get things evenly spaced if you can. Here's a tough one. This one might cause you some problems. So come up here, get off of linear and click angle. Click the straight line, then the angled line and see if you can get it to fit. It may or may not. If it doesn't, you can get it to fit out here or something like that. But you can probably get it to fit. And then back up. Say you want it to be linear. All right, and then so on and so forth. And just try to get that dimensioned as closely as you can. And then when you go to the blocks, I'd like you to do this general notes blocks, block, and try to put it down here somewhere. Left click, hold it down, drag it into place, let go. And then just click OK. I don't care what you put in there. I just want them in there. All right, there you go. You do not need to fill out the title block. You do not need to fill out the, the tolerance block. You don't even need to put your name on it for right now. Okay, I'm just hoping that you can do it. You do need to finish up putting all the dimensions on it. I have only shown some of them. It's up to you to get them all on there pretty close to what you've got here. If you get one or two things that are not correct dimensionally, I'll take off a very minor, minor amount. 
you are still learning, okay? But if you forget like five or six or seven of these, I'll take off a little bit more. Another one that might not fit correctly is this one. So let me just show you. If it does not fit correctly, and um, see these might be a little bit too close together here. If you need to move something, you can do it. Click, move it down, click, move it down. See those are a little too close together. Okay, but I'm going to hang with it anyway. Click, click. See how it's not going in between. That's perfectly all right. You can try to get it in between. And it did fit. So that's okay. But you don't necessarily need to. You can leave it out here if you want to. And then try to get your dimensions to line up nicely. Like that looks a little bit weird. So I think I want to grab that and move it to the outside. That looks much cleaner. All right. You don't have to make a perfect drawing. This is your first time. And so you should end up with something like that. I'm going to do a save. If you were to do a print right now, I'll do a preview. That's what it's going to look like. See those lines go away. Your viewport lines go away. This would be just fine. Okay. If you have the idea of seeing this, I would maybe put that a little bit higher up. Right. And now you've got the start of a very nice drawing. So save your file. And when you do your save as, please remember you're doing a DWG file. And it should default to an AutoCAD 2018. DWG. This is not a template or a DXF or a DWS or anything like that. It's a DWG file. There we go. That's your demo for plate 4.1.